Are you Dave Stewart? Yes, I am. Hi, I'm Mike Fletcher with the Sea Hunters. Dave, glad to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Mike. Mike, this is my son Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Daniel is my chief ROV operator. Oh, uh, no surprise. Get the young guy to be the pilot, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So this has got to be the Navajo. This is our sympathetic Navajo ROV. Looks like it's uh, really powerful for its size. Mike. This is the most powerful ROV in existence today from a thrust to weight ratio. The That's unit right. is configured with a total of four thrusters, two horizontal thrusters, one la lateral thruster, and then we have the vertical thruster, which allows the unit to fly up and down through the water, just like a helicopter flies up and down through the air. This unit is a high resolution Kongsberg Simrad Mesotech color scanning sonar. It will provide an extremely high resolution uh, picture, underwater picture, within the uh, range of the sonar, which is about 100 to 150 meters. What have you got for cameras here? Inside the main pressure dome, which tilts up and down, we have a high resolution, high sensitivity, wide angle black and white camera, and a high resolution, 10 to 1 zoom color camera. The lights, we've just had the lights upgraded. They're the new variable intensity LED super white lights which rotates up and down with the cameras. So how is this whole unit controlled? This is the topside control unit for the Navajo ROV, and the actual control is done by the Sony PlayStation game controller. <laughs> this is your expertise, Daniel. This is my field, yeah. yeah. It's pretty basic. You just use the control pad, and you control the ROV from the surface. It's uh -huh. pretty basic. You hold buttons, you get more access to different abilities, the uh -huh. lights, the camera, Zoom. So my understanding is if you want to go forward, you just push the knobs forward? No, one, no? one's forward. Okay. The other one, you go up or down or left or right. I'm already confused. <laughs> it, it, it gets used to it. It's kind of like driving, uh, if you ever play helicopter games. Yeah. You, you got all the different aspects. You can go around circles and all that. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as my dad was saying. It's driving a helicopter underwater. What about when you don't need that big punch? What, do you, what happens when you want to be very gentle and subtle about your movements? One so of the beauties of the Navajo ROV on the controller here, we have direct access to the power flowing to each of the four thrusters. We can actually control the power and reduce it to each of the four thrusters wow. so that you get only a fraction of the power flowing and therefore with a movement on the joystick controller, you can have very fine, very precise control for when you're in tight spaces and you're not involved with strong currents. But if you get out of a tight space, such as coming out of a shipwreck, and you hit some fairly strong currents, then all you have to do is reach down and crank up the power to the thrusters, and then you now don't have as fine a control, but you have the power to handle the currents that you're now experiencing. Sure. Well, and that's good because what we know about the site of the Alexander Macomb uh, is that she's standing very high off the seabed. And so that means there's going to be a very dynamic structure that will really affect the currents. So imagine you have a three or four, maybe even a five knot current, you'll actually get in the lee or the protection of some of the superstructure. And that's when we're going to want to dial these thrusters down and be more gentle. And very likely to be able to optimize your precision to get the best picture possible and yet still be able to handle the currents when you come back up into them. Well, while I've never worked with this machine before, our operator has. And he, he told me it's, it's state of the art and that it's, it really is the one for the job. So uh, I'm, I'm so pleased that we're able to get this to, to come out uh, in what I know is a really trying environment. We dove there last year. Uh, well, it's not deep for an ROV, it was fairly deep for my son and I who did the diving. 270 feet and some of the nastiest currents that we've ever had to, had to work in. And the, the, na the really bad thing about the current wasn't like the tr traditional tide where the water comes in, it stops, and then it flows and goes 180 degrees back out. On George's Bank you have a gyre and the, and the tide is moving as it comes and goes. So it never comes at you from the same direction for any <laughs> period of time. It's a nasty, that nasty place. That must make it place. really fun. Oh. The term they use is a gyre. And BIO, even before we went out there, warned us, be prepared for some very nasty, unpredictable tide and current. So I'm glad we've got a machine that hopefully can uh, can can beat its way through those nasty, uh, nasty currents. Well, I hope she lives up to your expectations. I, yeah. I think she has a good chance All right. of doing so. If there's a machine out there, this is the one? This is about it. Okay.